So it was an understatement because last week, when we were in prayer last week on the 40-day book, it was over the top. I mean, it wasn't just uh, <clears throat> it wasn't just seeing things, man. Things were happening. I mean, we were doing things. There were some healings that were happening that were just over the top healings. I mean, just some transformation in hearts. Lives were being changed that night. I mean, there was 12 of us, 13 of us here that night. And I tell you what, man, it was just incredible. I mean, if you guys can come on a, on a Wednesday night, I mean, this is, this, what we're doing is kicking off our Wednesday night services. So this is open to everybody to come to, even if you don't get a book or go through that, it's open for everybody. So once this book, once we're done with this um, eight week class, we're going to step right into something else. So for now on, from here on, Wednesdays will be on the go, seven o'clock. So Wednesdays at seven o'clock, just be here every Wednesday. Something's going to be going on. You might not know from week to week what it is, but it doesn't matter. Just come and enjoy and as Shelly said, we need to pray for the ones that are out today because, um, you know, uh, not giving any enemy any credit, but there are some people out today, you know, that are they're sick they're under the weather and um, some have lost family members. So they're dealing with those situations. You know, it's just life. People are dealing with life right now. You know, so we're just so thankful that that uh, we get to be here this morning and just be a part of what God's doing here at Life of Love Ministry Center. Um, the AM service, we got to do a baptism. Um, Ronica, if you guys know Ronica, she works at the gas station. What's the one right down here? Super K? Circle K? Super Circle K? <clears throat> the real good one where all, the, where all the awesome people come to. Yeah. So... She works there, and we're going to go. We're gonna, she's getting it set up to where we can go there and actually pray for people. So I would like to do a 24-hour deal there where, where we take shifts, and we 24-hour set this thing up, and we play music, and we pray for people that come in through the night. And um, so in the evening, they'll have to just be acoustic, you know, after a certain time. But, but it would be a good time. I think we can reach some people who are lost. They're just lost. They're just believing the life of the enemy. That's all it is. It's lost. Um, it's not who they are. So when you see someone out in the street, you see them struggling, and you see them hunched over or sitting on a bench. You know, when I was in bounty hunting, I remember um, picking this guy up. I hit the hotels, and uh, we crashed through the hotels. Uh, another, he was the, one of the most wanted guys in the county, and it was uh, in, in um, um, Hamilton County, the, one of the most wanted guys. And I knew where he was, and... But man, we got the love on it. I got the love on this guy. I got to minister to this guy. So it was just amazing. But he just didn't know who he was. He just didn't see who he was and who God created him to be, which was an amazing young man. But I got to minister to him that night. And he went to, and I don't know how some people get out of jail so fast, but he went to one county and was out into another county out and on a bench hung over again before I could even almost get home. I mean, it seemed like that fast. So I don't know what's going on with the system today. Um, not that he has to remain incarcerated, but just getting that help. And there was no help given while he was incarcerated. It was just get him in, get him out, get him in, get him out and push him out. But there needs to be something that helps him. Just a redeeming thing. You know, I mean, the, the, the jails obviously is not working. Um, and, you know, so we need to come up with something. And I, I believe it's the Christian's duty. It's our duty to get out in the streets and highways and byways and meet these people, share our testimony of when we overcame the life that we live. So I share the testimony when I was hooked on drugs, when I dealt drugs and come out of that lifestyle so I can share that with other people. And this is revelatory to them. So they get to see that and hear that and see where God has brought me to from that point. So that's just amazing in itself. So we're going to go down there, minister to those people down there in that city, in the, um, downtown Martinsville. <clears throat> it's not about here. We need to grab what's going on here to build ourselves up, to go out there. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want you to be here. You know, I'm missing the ones who are not here. I just miss them because I love them. I love seeing their faces. And each one of you carry something. You might not know it, but you carry something valuable that adds to this service, that adds to this, this culture that we're building, this kingdom culture that we're building. You carry something that's valuable. And it's a reward to me when you walk in and I see your face. Mark, when you walk in and I see your face, it's rewarding to me. 
that God loves you so much that he just reached out to you and grabbed a hold of you and brought you here. That's rewarding to me. I love it. I love it. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for the ones who are here today, God, that you would bless them, pour into them, Lord, each one of them. We know their hearts, God. Father, you know who they are. You know who they think they are. But you know truly who they are. Thank you for them today, God. We pray for healing hearts today. Lives changed. Encounters had, Lord, with you, Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for the ones who are unable to be here today. Father, you know their situation. You know they're dealing with life. Life is hard. Life is tough sometimes. Life is really, really tough sometimes. But, Father, with you in our lives, we can, we can withstand some of these things that we go through. And we can just have that peace and that joy that passes all understanding. Father, we glorify you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I know you guys carry Bibles on your phones or tablets or whatever. It doesn't matter. Matthew 7, 21. Do you turn the ambient music down just a little bit? Thank you. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Then I will say, and I will declare unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. It's kind of a tough verse right there. How many times have we called out Lord, Lord? In the midst of sin, just in life, in the battles, we called out Lord, Lord. But I want you to know, I, last week I spoke on Peter walking on water and falling, getting his eyes off of Jesus and putting his eyes on the world, the things that were going on in the world. And I made a statement last week that I can see in your lives, I can see what's going on, and, and that's true. I can. I can see those things. But I kind of got a whipping from the Lord this week because I didn't use it this way, but some people might have taken it this way. That because I can see that, that, that people can be fearful to come because they don't want to come and know when someone knows everything about them or know when someone can see into their life. And so um, I don't want it to ever be the gifts that God gives any one of us, a scare tactic to bring you to the cross. Never, because it's always going to be in love. For me, it's always going to be in love. And even if I word it wrong, it's going to be in love. That's my heart. My heart is to love, love you and love people well. So, but this last part of this says, In verse 22, and many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? See, we can't go off the gifts that we have to, to judge our, our, our heaven, whether we're going to heaven or hell. We can't, we can't go off the gifts that we have because our gifts are given to us at birth. They're ir irrefutable. The gifts that we have are given to us. You know, if you have a gift of prophecy, it's, it's, you already have it. You just have to learn how to obtain it and, and actually use it and bring it out. If you have a gift of, of, of giving a word of knowledge to someone, you know, those gifts, I feel like each one of us have all of these gifts, but it's whether we host them well and whether we can present this gift out well. But this says, 
you know, because I've prophesied over people and I've um, spoken into people's lives things that I should have never known about them that I knew that the Lord showed me. And so I did that and I've seen wonderful things happen. You know, I've watched healings. I've watched legs grow out. I've watched, I've, I've watched people. I remember Shelly and I were in a, in a prayer um, healing room ministry and we saw these two older people walk in and they walked in and they were both bent clear over carrying canes into the service. And I got to pray for the, the one guy and, and someone else prayed for the older lady. And when we were done praying for these people, both of them come out of the room standing up straight, not carrying their canes. That's the healing that God can do. But I can't judge my walk with Christ because of those healings. I can't because we can all do that. You know, you guys can do that. Even if you're not serving God, you can pray for someone to be healed because you're using the name of Jesus. And that goes so long. That's such a long way, the name of Jesus. You can do anything in the name of Jesus. It's going to happen. That don't mean that you're solid with Christ. That don't mean that you're a solid Christian. You could be without relationship with God and have those kind of powers or those kind of gifts. But Father wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us. He wants a relationship that will be unbreakable, undeniable. A relationship will not, not move us in any way, shape, or form. A relationship that's just over the top with him. I feel like some of you are really tired this morning. What did you guys all do last night? Did you guys stay up late last night? How many stayed up late? Too late. I did. Yeah. Mark, you need to go to bed early on Saturday. Go to bed early. Go to bed early. Come here awake and thriving and ready to go and see what happens. So how many of you are dating? Anybody dating in here right now? Anybody dating? Any young couples dating? We know we got married couples in here. We're excited for you got yeah. Good one, Terry. Terry is dating um, his bride. They're they're dating every day. Yeah, I'm dating my bride, Shelly. We, we, we go out, you guys go out on dates? Do you take you go out on dates? I mean, at all ever? Even though you're married, like date? Like there's date night? I mean, you can have you can go on a date still and have a good time. And I like going on dates sometimes where you can go on a date and you can actually. I've did this with Shelly. I've actually went to somewhere and um, we're on this date and I go up to one of the um, waitresses and I hand them a, um, like a, my phone number and I'll say, will you take that over to that lady over there? And they won't know we're together and then she'll take the phone number to the lady and Shelly will look up at me and probably discuss most times, but you know, just because she's <laughs> weirded out by me. But, but then, I'll go, then I'll go sit by her and that lady's watching us and the whole time's like, what are they doing? I mean, all of a sudden, then we walk out the, the place together. So it's, people just don't even know. But I like doing stuff like that. <clears throat> it's fun. It's fun. But I remember when Shelly and I met, we met on Christian Mingo. And she was, a, she was the first, I mean, she cost me $23 and she was the first one I met um, on Christian Mingo. $23. And... The Lord said to me that day, they said, this is, the Lord said, this is your bride, but it's going to be a roller coaster ride. And, um, and, and, and if we wrote a book, that would be the name of a roller coaster ride for our marriage right now. It's, I mean, our marriage is great, but I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, we're, we're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And so I'm just excited about my marriage to my bride. She's just amazing. Where's she at? she in here yet? Still? She's gone. Oh, there she is. Yeah. But you guys remember when you were dating and you sent your friend up to ask what the girl's name was or the guy's name was. You're like, go ask them what their name is because you wanted to know their name. You wanted to know who they were so when you approached them, you would know that, have that upfront information of that person or that girl. And in the Christian world, we need to know that we need a Savior. We need to know that we have need for a Savior first and foremost. If we don't realize that we need something or we need a Savior, then it doesn't even matter. But we need to know that we need a Savior just like we need to know that girl or guy's name before we... And when you call them by name, the same as we talked last week, the disciples called Jesus by his name. 
And he come to him. It said he would have passed him by, but he, but he come over to him. If you wouldn't have called out the girl's name, somebody else would have probably come up and called her name out first, and you would have missed it. But because you knew the name, you knew what you were seeking, you knew what you were wanting, you called out her name. So I called out Shelly. And she responded to that. She responded to that name. When you call out on the name of Jesus, he's going to respond to that name. Because he's literally standing at the door waiting on you to open it. If you can visualize a door, he's standing there and he's knocking. But there's no knob on his side. You have the knob on your side. You have to open that door to him. He cannot just open that door and invade into your life. You have to give him permission to come into your life. Acknowledging that you need a relationship. Calling Jesus out by name. So then when you, you find their name and you talk to them for a little bit, generally you'll ask them out on a date. You know, um, you guys remember those years when you were before you were married that you dated and you had such fun? You know that who remembers the first date? Boy, guys, we need to pick it up. You, you remember the first date? You do? You really do. What was it? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to ask you that. I don't want to get you in trouble. I don't want to get you in trouble. Yeah. So, um, I met Shelly September 5th. And I proposed to her April 5th. You guys will catch on to this. And we got married um, June 5th. So I kept it at fives because that's my favorite number, five. So I kept all those dates on the five. So I remember the five. So now what I do is I celebrate every fifth. So every fifth of the month we celebrate. Now I come to the point is, which fifth is this? Is this our dating fifth or our proposal fifth or our marriage fifth? So I have to keep that in track. But I know it's on the fifth. So the fifth is coming up. It gives me time to figure out which fifth it was. The older I get, the more time I have to take to figure out which one it was. So, um, But I... I love that dating time. But as I ask her to go on a date with me, we need to ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins. See, we're building up for a relationship here. Acknowledging that you need Jesus. Acknowledging that you're a sinner, that you need a Savior. And then you go from acknowledging to calling out his name. And then calling out his name to asking him to forgive you. So it's almost, I'm just parallel in this way we date and the way we have a relationship with Jesus. We're building up this thing for a relationship with him. And in the, in the, in the world side, if all goes well, when you go on that first date, you'll start developing a relationship with that guy or girl. Yeah. And with Jesus, there's no... It all goes well. With Jesus, when you ask him to come in your heart and live in your heart, it went well. You have started that relationship. You're dating now your heavenly father because we are the bride and he is the groom. And it says this in Romans 10, 9. If you confess your sins with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I want to read that again. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, in the Bible, there's a lot of ands. Do this and do this. Live like this and live like this. So, verse 10, it says, for with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, he confesses, resulting in salvation. So when you believe in your heart, it's resulting in the righteousness. And you would confess with your mouth, it results in the salvation. So now that we've come in, we, we feel like that we've come into a relationship with Jesus. We feel like that... We have literally come into this relationship with Jesus, and we've arrived here. But what my question is today is, is in Luke 6, 46, it says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? 
Why do some of us call out on the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, and don't do what he says to do? My thing is, is what I'm, I'm challenging myself is, is did we, even, did we even want that relationship with Jesus? Or was it a play on words? Because he knows everything. He knows the, the, the deep depth of our heart. He knows everything. Or was it a play on words to get what we wanted? Sometimes people play on words because they think that God's going to give them something, whether they're in a bind, they're in a situation, that God's going to just bring them out of that situation and everything's going to be honky-dory. No, he doesn't say that. He says he will go with you in your situation. He will walk with you through the situation. doesn't say he's always going to just yank you right out. Sometimes he does. Yank you out of the deep, miry clay, and you're back on a solid rock. But there's, that's not every time. That's not every time. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Remember, it says, many will, many will say, Lord, Lord, haven't we did this, haven't we did that? And he will say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. I mean, this is all scripture that I'm reading to you, so this is scripture. So you guys need to not listen to me so much, listen to me and trust me, I'm trying to give you the right thing. But there's things that I'm learning as I go. There's things that I'm learning. I'm not there, and I won't be there until I get there. There's things that I'm going to continue to learn. And my walk with Jesus is one of the biggest things that I want to be the best thing that I've achieved in my life. Is a solid, solid walk with Jesus. We have to have a solid walk with him. I see what he's brought me out of. I mean, he brought me out of some stuff. Man, I was in some deep stuff. And he brought me out of it. I mean, man, I, I mean, I've... I've been in some stuff I don't even want to say. That's how deep I've been in sin. It's just, it's, but he's brought me out and set me in a place because I put him first. Because I have a relationship with him. Because I want a deeper relationship with him. I want to walk closer to him every day. It doesn't matter. Guys, listen. I wake up every morning renewing, saying, God. I want something different. I want to be better. I want to be a, a cleaner Christian. I want my thoughts to be better. I mean, I cannot stand some of the thoughts that go through my head. Literally, I can't. And you guys are the same way. You got things like, where did that come from? I want to know where those things, how, because I feel like that there, there is a way that we can. I don't think Jesus thought that way. And if he didn't think that way, why should we have to think that way? But I think that we can, the renewing of our mind, we can change the way we think and change the intake that comes in our mind. But a lot of it's going to go along with the music that you listen to, the things that you set before your eyes, because those are all things that trigger and come into your mind. Guys especially are real visualizers. So for guys, things that we've dabbled in in our younger years or maybe even still dabbling in, it's hard to get away from those things. It's hard to get away from those images, those pictures, those thoughts because of, and I believe that it's becoming more and more, I just thought really before I used to think it was just guys, but more and more as the enemy works on women, I think it's women as well. The thoughts, the image thoughts, the images that come. You know, there was one um, lady in service couple months ago and she shared with me that some of the she just said she just having these thoughts and and she didn't know where they were coming from but it's just it's just triggers what they are they're triggers that take you back into um, that that error that time that time period so what I figured out is that when I have a bad thought I need to look into that thought and go where did this come from where did this generate at where did I get where did this thought start at in my life. And then I go and backtrack to that point. And I go, okay, it started here. Lord, forgive me of this right here. And change this right here. This thing that I stuck in my mind, I want to take it back out. I want to place it back right here. Because I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to do it. I want to have those kind of thoughts in my mind. I just don't. And so every day I have to just continue to renew those things. And continue to break off those thoughts. And break off those thoughts patterns. Romans 2.13, it says. 
For it is not the hearers of the law who are just before God, but the doers of the law will be justified. So don't just hear what I'm saying this morning. Whatever the Lord says for you to do, do it. Whenever he says, don't sin, don't sin. Whenever he says, you can't have this or you can't have that, take it away and get rid of it and see what he does. You know, there's things in life that you're going to be able to do that I can't do. There's, there's things that, that you're going to be able to do that I, that I can't do. I'll give you a for instance. There's some people that are so addicted to the golf game that the Lord might say to them, you can't play golf anymore. Doesn't mean golf is bad. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means for that person, they can't play golf anymore. And it might just be a season or it might be forever. It might be because they tie so much time into it and they tie so much of their energy into it. It takes away from everything else. It takes away from God, from family, from everything else. But there might be people that can do golf because they can balance it all well and it's fine for them. So we can't look at what everybody else does and say, well, they do it so I can do it. And that's not true. There's no truth in that. If the Lord says stop doing it, if the Lord says do not do it, then that means don't do it. I need to get beds for all you guys. <laughs> you should see it from my angle. <laughs> yeah, go on. Be doers of the word. James 1.22 says, I'm just giving you guys scripture this morning, trying to explain it to you. James 1, 22, verse, it says this. But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves or deceive themselves. See, we can hear the word and deceive ourselves and think we're okay. But if we're not doers of the word, I don't think we have relationship. So we need to go back to that. If you guys are still living in such a sinful, sinful lifestyle that nothing in your life is ever, ever going the right way. I, I mean, I have did this many times. Go back and do that first thing again and go, Jesus, come into my heart. Live into my life. I mean it this time. If I didn't mean it the last time, I mean it this time. I want relationship. I want my life to change. I want everything to be different. And it's going to be. There's no way that you can have a solid relationship with Christ and still live in the lifestyle that you lived in. There's just no way. I don't think it's possible to have a solid relationship with Jesus Christ and have a horrible life. I just don't think it's possible. I really don't. I mean, I think when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, your life is going to keep going from glory to glory to glory to glory. Up, 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 up. And then away. It just has to. I don't feel like that we can be in a solid relationship, and that's me. You guys can think of a different. Jesus answered and said to him in John 3.3, 3, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Right there, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. And what is being born again? Asking Jesus to come in your heart, live in your life, meet it with your heart, and realize that death he was raised from the dead. I love this one. We'll close with this one. Let you guys go home and go to bed. Yeah. You guys are probably living up. Go eat and go run in the hills or something. After. I know this cold weather kind of beats on you a little bit, doesn't it? I don't like it either. Philippians. 2.12 So then my beloved just as you have always obeyed there we go you always obeyed not as in my presence only but much but how much more in my absence see we'll come in the house of the Lord and we'll be like all good and everything's good and our tongue's good everything's good we're talking about it you're all happy you come in after just coming out of the car just with a screaming holler and fight and kids are knocking them back and they're throwing in the back seat and then you're racing to church because you're late and everybody was not managing their time well and you finally get here and you walk in the door and go yeah <laughs> I 
because you're stepping in the presence. But, but Father wants to see that smile in and out, even when you're in the presence. He should be with us all. The presence, this verse indicates that sometimes it's absent. But in the, in, the, in, the, in the inner midst of the presence or the absence of the presence, we should be the same. We should be able to operate the same. I know it's easier said than done, but that's why every day we have to practice. We have to keep practicing, keep striving, keep moving forward, keep doing what God wants us to do. And it says this, in the last part of that, we'll work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Not with what the pastor says, not with what Tammy says in the sozo. Not with what Darlene says when she prays. Not when, with what Ann says when she opens up in a prayer and a service. But work out your own salvation with fear and trembling to what the Father says to you. What Holy Spirit says to you. That's why it's so important that we have a relationship with, with Father and have a relationship with Holy Spirit and have Him in us, living in us, and residing in us. That's why it's so important to have all these things so we can operate as solid Christians. I want to be that person, and, and it happens in, in always. I want to be that person when I walk in a place, people see Jesus in me. I want to be that person when I walk in a place, they're like, man, there's something different about him. He kind of lights the room up a little bit. I want to be that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be that. I want to be that because Jesus lives in me. And if he lives in me, he shines out of me. And the more I have a relationship with him, the brighter I become. It's all about relationship. The better your marriage gets, the brighter it becomes, the more thriving it becomes, the more exhilarating, exhilarating it becomes. But the less you have relationship, the more it dwindles away, the more it kind of fades away and you kind of forget about that first date, that first time you kissed, that first time that you held hands. The first time you walked on the beach together, you kind of forget about all those things. Relationship fades away. And the light fades with it. But the deeper you have a relationship with Jesus, the more your light's going to shine. And you're going to walk in a room and people are going to say, what in the world do you have on you? And they're going to want it. I promise you they're going to. They're literally going to want that. So walk in a dark room and see how much it lights up. I'm serious. Walk in the dark room and see how much it lights up. So, so when you walk into a room, you walk into a room, you should be able to walk into a room of people, and you know, if, and I'm not seeing physical light, but when you walk into a room, and these, you got, we pray for our, our mayor, we pray for our mayor, we go down on a, on a, once a month on Mondays and pray for the mayor, you know, and, and they go through a lot of stuff. There's some board meetings that they have, there's some situations they go through, it's just tough, you know park board, just everything, just all these different things are going on, you know, and, 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 and our mayor can have the authority on him. Shannon Cole could have had the authority on her. She prayed, she had us pray for her several times about different situations that we would just ask God to be able to help her walk into a situation and change it. But you should be able to walk into a room of darkness dark attitudes and dark people and change that environment to those people say what just happened what just happened and your board being is going to go fine your day is going to go good lives are going to be changed hearts are going to be won people are going to be saved people are going to even be healed you're going to be able to walk into a room and this is as simple as that it's not about a word that we say it, we, it's never about any words it's Jesus we can simply say in Jesus name be healed and walk away. We don't have to do anything else but say that. But our light should shine so bright that we change things in a room. Dad, when you walk in a room, those boys should light up because they see you. And they do. I know they do. They should. When you come home from work, her face should just beam with the light. I'm like, you're here. You're here. She's working on it. She's running right now. She's running. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. You should be able to walk home and have a meal. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Life is crazy. Sometimes you can't do that. But on the serious side, check your, check your life. Don't check it by what you're able to do, your gifting. But check it by the love that you have toward others. Love is the key. 
to all of it. Having love is the key to everything. If you don't have love, you have nothing. If you don't love people, you have nothing. If you see someone come in front of you, they're a heroin addict, and, and you cannot engage with them and love on them, you have nothing, really. And I know sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to approach. You know, I've got the young man downtown. I won't say his name again, but there's a young man downtown um, that I've been um, praying about and meeting with. And there's some different personalities there. So I'll just address him in who he is. And I'll say his name. And I'll wave at him. I'll even sit down and talk with him. Even though sometimes the other personalities are trying to come out and they're trying to talk and they're trying to do things. I just, I just say, hey. And I'll call him by name. And I'll talk to him. I want to talk to you. This is who I'm talking to right now. Not these other. All this is a broken soul, broken spirit. It just needs to be integrated together. You know? Every time something happened to you as a young person, part of you broke off right there at that spot. And it stayed there. Or you stayed in that age. You know, when you... How many of you can walk to your parents and almost you walk... As soon as you walk into where your parents are, you feel intimidated by your parents? Or you afraid they're going to say something? Or it's, it's just intimidating. That goes back to the childhood thing that, you, that part of you broke off there and you stay there. So when you walk into that room and you see your parents again, it... it it's all it is. And all you need is just heal. It's, it's nothing wrong with you other than you just need healing from those times in your life to where it just comes together. There again, Access Ministries, Tammy Drossett has um, cards back here in the back. Schedule an appointment with her. I promise you it's going to be life-changing. I mean, it just really will. If you want, if you want light to like come into your life, that's going to do it. I mean, that, getting, uh, getting, going there with the right attitude I mean, don't go in there with an attitude of nothing's going to happen. Go in there with it. I'm expecting, you know, when, when these preachers pray for these guys, they, they touch them and they all fall down. They, they come up expecting something. They didn't come up with walls up. They come up expecting. That's why they fall straight down. They're expecting something, God to move. Anybody want to get baptized today? We got, we got the tank full. We didn't finish that story this morning. You want to? Let's do it. Come on. It'd be good. You guys watch this. Watch her life. Watch what's going to happen. She's going to light up even more. Tammy can help me with it. Anybody else? So we did the baptism this morning. She went in the water not knowing who she was. She come out of the water knowing who she was. She found her identity in the water. There's nothing about this water. It's about what Jesus did in the water. Brought her the newness of who she is. Because, you know, you guys know that we're all dreamed of before the foundation of the earth. I say this all the time. We're dreamed of before the earth was even created. We were dreamed of as amazing sons and daughters. And she did not know that she was amazing. She did not know that the gifts that God gave her that she was worthy of having. She did not know that she was even worthy of being in this city. But she is. And so today she realized that. So it's just amazing. So we're just excited. So Ruth is going to come out and we're going to, um, you guys just, just stay. We're, we're almost done. Just stay and watch what happens here. Um, watch what happens in the water. Watch what God's going to do. Let's just pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone here, God. Thank you for the hearts this morning, God. We've gotten moved on. While we're waiting on her, I need, I need two people to come up front here to, to pray. Because I feel like there's two people, at least two people that need prayer this morning. At least two people that need prayer this morning. Darlene, will you come up? She's all right. She's okay. Darlene's going to come up. You praying? You need prayer? <laughs> yeah. You want to grab this guy right here? 
She's going to rock your world. There's some more that need prayer this morning. So I need, I need some other. I, I just, the Lord just showed me some more. So Tammy, if you can come up. Shelly, if you can come up real quick. Um, and <clears throat> listen, guys. I mean, it, it, you know, if you come up and pray, and I don't care if it's your hunk of time to come up and pray. There's no condemnation here. Just come up and pray and get freed of whatever, whatever it is in your life. It doesn't matter. I mean... My lands, I mean, if I went through my life, the life of sin, you guys would all be freaking out, probably. Um, it could be a super, super long book on my life. Super long book. Anybody need healing this morning? We've got people up here that, that can pray healing over you. So I need, um, we got, we got someone free up here. Come up and pray. You know who you are. Come up and pray. Come down here to Ann. She's on the end. Come on. guys just stretch your hands forward this young boy he's got some back pain and he just he's healed right now father we thank you for the healing attributes of heaven right now lord father we ask that you would bring complete healing to this boy we know you've already paid for it god but it just manifests in his body that complete healing that pain would leave right now in jesus name Hey, you have no authority in the body of the child of the Most High King. You came and let us know something was going on, and that's okay, but now you have to leave. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Lord. 